Well, I'm going to start off with a, a deep pondering question. And it's this one. Is what needs to stay behind in 2022 and not go with you into 2023? I want you to think about that for a moment. Maybe it's an attitude. Maybe it's a behavior. Maybe it's an activity, a relationship. Maybe it's something you think about in your mind. Maybe it's in your alone times you're doing. Maybe it's how you carry yourself at work. Maybe it's the words you choose. But what needs to stay back in 2022 and not be part of your journey going forward? 1 Thessalonians 5, 21 through 22 says this. It says, examine everything carefully. Everything. We examine all of our lives. And that's what we, as we come into this season of 21 days of prayer and fasting, that's one of the purposes is to examine, just to take a step back and not be in such a hurry that we just kind of keep doing the same things we've been doing over and over, but we take a moment to pause and reflect for a purpose to see if maybe there's some adjustments that need to be made. And it says, so what you do is whatever you find is good, it says hold fast to it. Don't let that go. Bring it with you. He said, but whatever is evil and whatever God would call evil, he said, let's just let that go. Let's just leave it, in the behind, leave it behind us and let's not carry that forward into our journey. For you, what is the good that needs to go with you? And what are the things that need to just stay in the past and don't go forward? Some of you may be new to Livingston Church, and we're so glad that you're part of our church family, but something we started doing two years ago is we begin each year with 21 days of prayer and fasting. So today I want to talk to you just a little bit about that, because you may not really understand the heart behind it, even though it's an annual part of our journey, and we invite you to go on that journey with us. So today I'm going to share a little bit about the heart behind it, but I want you to see it this way. It's not a requirement. Nowhere in the Bible does it say you have to fast. Now, we all need to be praying, but nowhere does it say we have to fast. It's not a requirement. What I want you to see is an opportunity not to be missed. I don't want you to see it as this thing like we have to do or it's just something we do here at the church, so I'm just going to do it. Let's not have that heart. Let's, let's look at it as this is a moment to have an experience with the Almighty, with a deep connection. And that's what this is about. We're letting go of the bad stuff, holding on to the good, and we're connecting with God really like in a new way. Because sometimes when we go through our journey, we kind of throughout the year pick some stuff up. And this is, a, this is a time of year where a lot of people reflect on their lives anyway. So it's a good time to do this. But I want you to see is this is a moment to encounter God, not something that we are just doing or we have to do. One of my favorite Bible characters is Daniel. Amazing man of God. He was a man of God when he was a teenager. Look, he stood up to adults that had taken his people captive, he and his friends, and, and, and kind of put them into a situation they probably didn't want, but he never wavered from God. But if you look, there was something he did consistently, and it was prayer. This was a mighty man of prayer, and it showed up in his behavior, and everybody else around him saw it. As high up as the king noticed this man was different because he had devoted his life to the Lord, and it showed up in his prayer life. He was an amazing man of prayer. So we're going to use him as our example as we go forward into today's message and even into our 21 days. And sometimes people kind of wonder, why do we do this? It's looking at men like Daniel. And he prayed three times a day. He would do morning, around lunch, and evening time. He would devote himself to prayer. 
And that's kind of our heart as we go into this new season. Daniel 9, 3 talks about this. There, there was a, he was pondering something. He was pondering the, the journey of the Israelites and then their captivity and some of the promises that God had made, and his heart was troubled. So here's what his response was in Daniel 9, 3. He said, I gave my attention to the Lord God. Man, what, what a great stopping point. In his troubled heart, his mind that was racing, he said, I just took a moment. And I gave my attention to God. And that needs to happen not just in a church service. That needs to happen really on a daily basis, but especially when we're facing those difficult moments that we just take our attention and we turn it to God. And he says, here's what I did. To seek him by prayer and supplication. So supplication means like deep prayer. That's not like thank the Lord for my food prayer. That's like pressing into God, emotional. And then he said, I added to it fasting. And then he said, sackcloth and ashes, which is something they did as a sign of humility. But he gave his attention to the Lord, and he he gave the Lord prayer and fasting. And that's what we're going to do. We're just going to devote the next 21 days prayer and fasting, and hopefully that it continues into our journey. But I had this question. Somebody asked me, why 21 days? And if you notice, it's nowhere in the Bible that the 21 days is some magic number that we do. In fact, to my knowledge, this is the only place, the verse I'm about to share with you, is the only place that it's there. But really what it comes down to is an attitude of a few things. One, it's just significance. It's one thing to give a day, and that's great. It's one thing to give three days. That's awesome. There were several people in the Bible that did that. But 21 days takes a commitment, doesn't it? There's something serious and significant about it. And that's what we want in this period is that this is serious for us. We're not just going to take a couple days. We're going to begin this year with something serious. And then add to it's just devotion. Because it takes, uh, another word you could say is stick to itiveness. It's going to take that to go through 21 days. Those of you who have done it before, it's not necessarily an easy journey. Depending on the type of fast you choose. And by the way, you can go to our website. Uh, there's a place we talk about prayer and fasting. You see the different types of fasts. But it takes, whatever you choose to do is going to take devotion. And there's going to be lots of pressure to do Something else, a friend of mine began a, a season of, of fasting, and he was, he was abstaining from all food. He was just going all in. And a couple of days in, a lady knocked at his door, precious woman of God, and says, the Lord told me to give this to you, and it was a big old cake. He's like, I rebuke you, devil, in the name of Jesus. <laughs> but he's like, really? Really? I wonder the Lord was just going, let's just see how devoted you are. But that's what 21 days, and then it's about breakthrough. It's about breakthrough. We're going to see some breakthroughs. Every year we see amazing breakthroughs for those who go on this journey and stay with it and really seek the Lord. But let's look at Daniel as our example. Another moment where he was just troubled thinking about what his people were going through. And this is Daniel 10, beginning in verse 2. He says, In those days I, Daniel, had been mourning for three entire weeks. He said, I did not eat any tasty food, nor did meat or wine enter my mouth, nor did I use any ointment at all until the entire three weeks were were completed. You notice the tasty food and wine and meat. Some people refer to this as the Daniel fast. That is uh, now kind of a a thing that promoted. You can go online and find all kind of research about it. People do it for health reasons. But he was on a spiritual journey. He said what he he was saying is I'm not going to be focused on pleasing my body because I want something from God. He, He was in mourning. Because of what his people were going through. And he said, I just need to seek the Lord. 
But here's what the significance of 21 days is. We talked about breakthrough. Daniel saw a breakthrough. At the end of that journey, he was actually visited by an angel who said, the Lord heard you, and the Lord is moving on what you're praying about. That's what's going to happen for those of us who go on this journey. There's going to be amazing breakthrough. So let me just tell you four things about what the heart of prayer and fasting is all about. Why do we do this? And I'm going to move through these pretty quick. The first one is holiness, not health. This time of year, we all, or some of us, we look at the scale, and for some of us, like myself, the scale is just wrong. I mean, just, I'm just going to be honest with you. It is wrong. That dude is broken. I got to get a new one. I mean, I'm telling you, it's like off by 30 pounds, y'all. This thing is broke as a joke, I'm telling you. So anyway, <laughs> but what can happen is we, we have this experience of losing weight, getting healthy. And while there are amazing health benefits to fasting medically, that's not what this is about. I'll tell you from my journey what I do. I don't look at the scale. I don't take my measurements. I don't do anything like that. I don't know what my weight is right now. I'm not going to weigh, and I'm not going to do it until I get done with fasting. I'm not, I'm not going to try to see how that's going because it's about holiness. It's about my life being set apart for God. It's about my body being dedicated to the Lord, not about what my body looks like. Another way you say it, it's about spiritual health, not physical health. And while everything spiritual carries into our natural life, it has great benefits. That's not what this is about. It's not about changing our diet to get healthy. It's not about, I'm going to change some things. No, it's about really about a sacrifice for the Lord for holiness, not for health. It's about our God and our spiritual man. God had a complaint against his people because fasting uh, was, a, was a tradition in the Jewish culture and many other cultures. In fact, you'll find out in the Bible there's not a lot of direction on fasting because it was just part of their culture. They knew about it. it it's kind of a little bit foreign for us. But many cultures just grow up with fasting, and the, and the Israelites were the same. But their heart was wrong. Look at this in Zechariah 7, 5. He says, say to all the people of the land and to the priests, when you have fasted and mourned in the fifth and seventh months, these 70 years, he asked this question, was it actually for me that you fasted? Wow. He said, y'all are skipping some meals. You're praying some prayers. But it's like I'm not even in the midst of it. And the whole purpose of fasting is God. But they were missing it. And I want you to see this thought of instead of centering our day around food, what we do is we make God our primary attention. Does anybody else, your day focuses on food? Does anybody else? Okay, my, mine is morning to night. I'm thinking about meals. Look, I think about meals days ahead of time. I'm in the morning not thinking about that day. Sometimes I'm thinking about tomorrow. I, I, I appreciate food. I love living in South Louisiana. We have the greatest food God has ever made. All right? I go to other states, and I just feel sad for them. <laughs> but in Louisiana, uh, we also have a, a little bit of a problem because the food is so good. We think about it. But what we're doing in this season of prayer and fasting is not about the food. And what it does is it exchanges the needs of the physical body for those of the spiritual. Because what happens is we may be feeding our, our physical man really well, but our spiritual man is anemic and dying. And we need to feed him. What happens is in our life, there's things that pull our attention, our mind, our heart away from God. And what fasting does is it distances those things from us so we can focus on God. Another thought for you is in fasting, we're not trying to get something from God, but we're seeking to realign our heart's affections with His. And fasting enables us to cleanse the sanctuary of our hearts from every other rival. Why fasting? It shows our desperation for God and it demonstrates the, what, we, what we need and want, that we need and want God more than we want food. 
there was a man who um, would teach on prayer and fasting. And I actually went to a prayer conference and heard him. And, and they had a, a prayer center. They were in Colorado and had this beautiful prayer center up in the mountains. And he would go up there periodically and he would extend his fast. And, and in the midst of that, he was just hungry. So as he would think about things, as his body was saying, hey, get a pizza, go, go drink some Mountain Dew, you know, he, he said, God, I, would, I want you more than the craving I have right now for pizza. You satisfy more than any drink ever could. What was he doing? Keeping his mind on God, not on the thing he craved. I'm going to skip past the verse that you see in your notes in Isaiah 58. You can go uh, read that yourself. But really, it's not about the health, but it's about the holiness. Second thing that uh, fasting and prayer are about, it's relationship, not ritual. And, and we're going to do this every year. This is part of our journey here on out. This is something we're going to be doing every year. But what happens is we can kind of get caught in the tradition. And, and, and tradition is lifeless. It's dead. That's not what this is about. It's about relationship with God. It's not something we do. It keeps us centered on who we are. And we are children of God. We have a connection with the Father. And that's ultimately what this is all about. All throughout the year, we have things that pull us away from God. Pull us away. What does fasting do? It cuts those things away almost to get reattached to God. Bill Bright, who wrote some amazing um, teachings on prayer and fasting. In fact, on our website, we have two articles he wrote that really give you a lot of details that are so important for fasting. But he said this. He said, this spiritual practice is a gift from God meant to grow us and draw us into a deepening relationship with himself. That's what this is is about. It's drawing near to God by pushing other things away. It's detaching our, us from things and reattaching us to God. That's what it's about. Well-known verse is James 4, 8 through 10. It says, draw near to God and he will draw near to you. And to me, that's the greatest promise in the Bible. And a lot of times that's what we, what we focus on. But look at what's behind it. You got to cleanse your hands, you sinners. You bunch of sinners, you need to clean your hands. We want to draw near to God, but we got to we got to clear these out so we can attach to God. He said, "Now you got to purify your hearts, you double-minded." Sometimes, and look, I'm going to talk about me. Sometimes I want the world and I want God. I don't know what the saying is, have your cake and eat it too. I never understood a meeting, but the thought is we want both. Right? We, we, we kind of want one foot in the world, one foot with God. And we kind of go between. What this is about, he's saying, you got to cut that off. It's not pure. It's not holy. You got to detach from those things. Then he goes on to say in verse 9, he says, be miserable and mourn and weep. Why does he say that? Because sometimes we're doing things we shouldn't be doing, and we kind of treat it like it's really no big deal. Can I tell you it's a big deal to God? Sin, he does not take lightly. He's never like, eh, whatever. No, he, the Bible said he grieves over it. He's emotional about it, not in a good way. So he said, you be the same way that we look at that and go, oh, God doesn't like it and neither do I. He said, let your laughter be turned into mourning and your joy to gloom. And then humble yourselves in the presence of the Lord. And then in turn, what he does is he exalts you. Wow. And that leads to the third purpose of prayer and fasting. It's humility, not haughtiness. What does that mean? It's not about pride. Well, you know, I fasted for 21 days. <laughs> I didn't eat anything, y'all, just water. <laughs> and people are like, wow, how'd you do that? 
what happens is when we're careful, it becomes about what we did instead of about God who sustains. You know, the, uh, the, the rooster, if you ever see a rooster in the pen, especially when there's hens around, they are the dude. And they're going to let you know about it. They're going to crow and they're going to peck and they're going to chase you out the pen because they the man. Sometimes we can be that way about our holiness and the things we do. We think we're better because we do those things. You ain't better. It's God who's good. Look, even Jesus, when somebody said he's good, he's like, hey, me, it's him. What do we have? It's about humility. And that's why Matthew 6, 16 says this. He said, whenever you fast, don't put on a gloomy face like the hypocrites do. They neglect their appearance. Look at this. So they will be noticed by men. They're intentionally walking around like poor pitiful me. So people go, what's wrong? Well, I'm fasting. Look at what, look at what Jesus says. They have their reward in full. I don't know about you. I want great things coming out of this prayer and fasting. I don't want my reward people going, wow, you're amazing for fasting that long. And that's it. <laughs> All my prayers, it's like they just kind of go poof, right there in the floor. All the things I'm seeking God for just don't happen because I'm all about it for the attention. So, by the way, there's nothing wrong with saying you're fasting. We don't have to lie about it. But what we don't do is we don't, like, brag about it. We don't do it for attention. That's the heart behind it. Proverbs 35, 13 says this, I humbled my soul with fasting. There's a humility that goes with it. Why humility? Man, this is so huge. We could spend a message just on this, this giant thought. James 4, 6. He gives a greater grace. I want greater grace. Grace is the good things that God gives. I want more, y'all. Look, I'm a little bit selfish. I want everything God has. And it says he freely gives us all things. But where does it begin? Humility. Because humility opens the door to grace. And fasting and prayer are a type of humility. You know how I know it? Very few people like to do it. Most people struggle with prayer. I don't know anybody that's like, woohoo, fasting. Yes. This is awesome. Restricted diet. Yes. Love that. It's humbling. It's hard, but it's hard for a purpose. And it's not punishment. It's not penance. It's not about that. That's a whole other wrong attitude. But it's grace. It's humility. And look at what, what it says. God is opposed to about proud, but he gives grace to the humble. When we humble ourselves, God just pours out grace. It's a promise. I want grace so there's a place of humbling ourselves. And the greater we humble ourselves, the greater the grace that he gives. One of my favorite quotes, you've heard me say it before. If you've been around long enough, you'll hear me say it many, many more times before I die. And it's this. The disciplines, which is things like prayer, fasting, Bible study, worship, and on and on. He said what they do, there's a purpose for them is to place ourselves before God so that he can transform us. Because the problem is we can't change ourselves, but he can. And the disciplines put us before him. He said by themselves, the disciplines can do nothing. Skipping a meal ultimately does nothing on its own. What do they do? They get us to the place where something can be done. They're God's means of grace grace. We need more grace. And the last purpose of prayer and fasting is results, not rote. Rote is mechanical or unthinking routine. One, one dictionary called it joyless. Joyless. This season ought to be emotional. 
And it's not because we hate skipping meals or doing something we want, don't want to do. No, we're getting into the presence of Almighty God. I literally cannot wait. Our prayer room opens at 5 in the morning. I will be here. And I can't wait just to get into the presence of Almighty God. But what's pretty cool about prayer and fasting is it has results. I want you to see a few thoughts. Because the first thing God wants to do is a work in you. And prayer opens that door. And the next thing God wants to do is a work through you. And prayer opens that door. The great pastor John Wesley said this, God does nothing but an answer to prayer. God wants to do something amazing in you, and he wants to do something supernatural through you, and that happens through prayer and fasting. There are results. So we're not doing this just to do it. We're looking forward to seeing what God's going to do. Some of you have been on this journey, and every year it's amazing. And you're like, I can't wait to get in there to see what God's going to do this year. God wants to do something very special at the beginning of 2023. And before you is an opportunity to do something maybe you've never done before. Don't miss what God wants to do. I want y'all to put up the slide about the prayer and fasting. We've got some opportunities for you here. We got our youth building completely done. Sound system got put in this week. We are done. So excited. So what we decided to do is we're going we're gonna to kick it off and we're going to break that room in with 21 days of prayer and fasting. So a couple opportunities is every day, every weekday, Monday through Friday, prayer room is going to be open from 5 a.m. to 8 p.m. You can come and just in there. We'll have uh, music in there just playing constantly. We have rows set up. We have prayer stations that you can go visit. There's a place for you even to write uh, your prayer requests so we can be praying for those. We're even going to have a place for you just to write. Tell us what God showed you. It's going to be amazing. But it's time for you just to get in a place quiet with the Lord where you can just dedicate yourself in a place that's dedicated for God to move. And then on Wednesday nights at 7 and Saturday mornings at 9, we're going to have a corporate time just to gather together as a prayer service. We'll worship some, have a word from the Lord, and then we're just going to spend some time in corporate prayer. It's going to be absolutely amazing. But I want to encourage you to do this. Sometimes we use the phrase, find time. You're not going to find time. Time is finite. It's limited. I don't know about y'all. I'm busy. But what I'm encouraging you to do is to make time. Put some things aside that really aren't important, have no spiritual value, don't make any eternal difference, probably aren't that great anyway for you. Put those aside. And just spend time with the Lord. It doesn't have to be in the prayer room. It could be at your house or wherever. We just want to make that opportunity for you. But I encourage you to find time for it. And then I want to put this up. is that We have prayer and fasting resources, including the uh, what's called the Pray First Prayer Guide. It's a great prayer guide, heart behind prayer, different types of prayer. It's a tool you can use to guide you through there. We've got all kind of uh, messages. I did a message a couple years ago talking about all the details of fasting. If you want to know a lot more, go listen to that message. It'll tell you all the, the things you should do, shouldn't do, all that kind of stuff. You can go check it out. But it's on our website. Under For You, you'll see uh, prayer and fasting resources. And I encourage you today just to go take a look at it, spend some time there. 
as tomorrow morning we kick it off all the way through January 22nd. We're going to end on a Sunday, and it's going to be an amazing time. Right where you are, just bow your head and close your eyes, please. If you're watching online, same thing. A couple questions for you. On this day, this God's doing so much. What's he saying to you? What is God saying to you? It's personal. What's he telling you to do? The next question is, how are you asked? How are you going to pray and fast in the next 21 days? What's that journey look like for you? It's personal. It needs to be significant. Don't miss what God wants to do. Father, right now, I just pray for your people. I just speak grace over your people right now. So we enter into this amazing season where you want to do so much. I just pray for grace. I pray for clarity. That they can see the steps forward for their journey, what that looks like. I pray for peace. Some of this room may just kind of be in turmoil of life situations or what this year is going to look like. I speak peace over them right now. And Lord, I speak the name of Jesus over everyone listening to this message. For you to bless them as only you can. Lord, we love you. We honor you. And we pray all this in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. And everybody said, amen. Come on, we give God the very best hand clap we can give. Amen. Love you guys. God bless you.